So one of the things we like to do here at Tanjo is, is not just build technology for technology's sake, but actually focus on real problems, real business problems that we can solve where we can increase value. Um, here's uh, one that we're really excited about that we found by working with one of our Fortune, I guess, 50, 60 uh, customers. And we, uh, again, just through listening to them and understanding what they were doing and running one of our little uh, machine learning strategy sessions with a, a group of folks there, uh, we found out that they do this uh, in marketing. Uh, they, they were doing things in a way that we thought we could really improve upon. Um, so what they were doing is this practice called customer segmentation, kind of the holy grail in marketing. No matter what you're trying to offer to the marketplace, whether it's a product or a service, is you want to get inside of the customer's head. You'd like to see the world and especially your product from their perspective. Um, so we started talking about things like customer empathy and, and you know, how do we take machine learning and build what, I, what we were calling initially a customer empathy engine, right? Since we can get a really good sense or we can model people's interests and, and understanding really well. Um, a lot, just like Netflix under, uh, ended up understanding, right? When they were looking at how do we make really good recommendations of movies and video content to people. Uh, one way is to take the old approach, like you see here, of just calling up a bunch of people or creating focus groups and asking them. But it's kind of like a Schrodinger's cat kind of thing, right? The, just the very practice of asking someone a question, if they know they're being asked a question, they can, they'll start gaming the system. Um, and if you really want to know someone's true intentions uh, or true interests, you can ask them or you can just watch what they do. Turns out that the second way is the best way. Um, because if, uh, you know, if I ask uh, a lot, all of you today, uh, look, you've got a couple of choices tonight. Um, do you want to watch uh, uh, Lawrence of Arabia or Hot Tub Time Machine? And everyone will, some, a big number of you will say, oh, you know, Lawrence of Arabia, you know, for stunning cinematography, great director, for great performance. Uh, what do you do when you go home at night? You watch Hot Tub Time Machine, right? Because, um, and, and that's, that, that's just uh, one of the problems with um, any science like this where you're asking people. Um, and again, there, there's uh, something about these approaches where, where you're really ending up, ending up with static views of people's behavior, whereas we're all dynamic. All of us change state. None of us uh, stay in one sort of behavior mode all the time. We might change seasonally. We change certainly as we go through life and uh, go get out of college and uh, get married, have a family, move throughout our career. Uh, we change state. We change our buying patterns and our interests and our behaviors. So, uh, so what we did with that is, is we realized that a lot of people spend a lot of money on this customer segmentation modeling, you know, and then ends up with this sort of aggregate these aggregates of uh, people's behavior. So it would be like, you know, iPhone mom. iPhone mom has uh, 2.5 kids. She controls 82% of the household uh, spending and uh, likes these kinds of vehicles, this kind of clothes. She shops in these places, uh, eats this kind of food or buys this sort of food for the family. Um, and that might be true of a, st of a, of a static moment in time. Uh, but, but marketing firms, especially consumer firms, uh, consumer companies spend a lot of money on trying to, to uh, nail that down and get inside of iPhone mom's head. Um, but again, as I said, it's, we're all dynamic, we all change state. So after spending six figures, maybe seven figures on these studies, they end up with a report. So it ends up a piece of paper that probably goes in a file somewhere and is pulled out occasionally when they're trying to come up with a new marketing campaign or a new product. Um, what we did, is took our machine learning system and actually uh, read in that, that data. And what we're able to do is create what we call uh, Tanjo Animated Personas, or TAP. The idea is tap into your customer's mind. Uh, it's that customer empathy engine. See the world from their point of view, see your product from their point of view, and your competitors' products and offerings from their point of view. And that, uh, the results we had around that were immediately really exciting because certainly we were uh, improving upon that static PowerPoint presentation or those um, uh, one sheeters about uh, you know what uh, iPhone mom wants. Instead, we can actually create that persona. We release those personas onto the web. We can make as many of them as as our customers are interested in. And um, and number one, the first thing we could do is see like look every day and see. 
all right, what is iPhone mom interested in today? What's attracting her attention? Uh, and she would actually score things that she's finding, whether it's uh, an advertisement, it's a YouTube video, it's, uh, it's an article that she read, it's, uh, it's something that, anything that she actually encounters. And of course, because she's a machine, she can actually um, read thousands of things every single day. Now that, first of all, was, al was already extremely interesting, a huge improvement over the static view that they had that they were updating every year or however often they were doing it. So now you've got something you can look every day. You could look every hour if you wanted to and see it as it changes. Now the next thing we did is said, all right, well, let's now try asking it some questions. So let's take our proposed marketing idea, our new ad message, the new design for our new product or whatever it happens to be and present it to iPhone mom and see what she thinks and she'll actually score that. So I can take my competitors offerings and my and multiple offerings that I'm thinking about, present it to each persona and they'll actually score it and tell you what they think. Uh, and you can, it's actually very addictive, very interesting uh, and we already have some great case studies uh, developing around this idea. Um, one of the things we did as we were testing this is started thinking about like, again, with this idea of uh, of uh, machine learning needing lots and lots of content, like if, we can, if I can uh, animate iPhone mom as a sort of aggregate model of, of a buyer's behavior, or I can, I can do Joey Gearhead or Ellen Trendsetter or you know, any of these different aggregate models of consumer behavior, why can't I do actual people or actual households? So again, if I have enough data about you know, credit card uh, buying habits and taxes and uh, payroll uh, information and uh, anything, there's lots of information out there. I can actually model precise uh, behavior out of households, animate that, and then run experiments against that. And that gets really exciting. Uh, one of the things we did, one of the first things uh, I did, in fact, was uh, actually animated, or I called it resurrecting, Victor Hugo. So think about Victor Hugo. He, you know, he's not around anymore to ask, uh, uh, you know, for us to ask his permission. Um, so, but he has written a lot of content, and a lot has been written about him. So all I do is feed all of that into the machine learning system. It builds essentially an interest graph around Victor and now I can look every day and say what does Victor Hugo think about the political situation today or what's happening in our economy or what's happening in current events and again every day I can see what Victor thinks because he's reading stuff, he's encountering things, things he's, that he's attracted to are pulled in, he scores them and I can see that every day. So I think we, we've done Alexander Hamilton, we've done George Washington, we've done Martin Luther King Jr. Um, yeah, uh, it just goes on and on. Any, anybody where I have that much information. Now, my dad died, uh, it's only been about 60 days ago now. And I, I know for, that makes some people uncomfortable, but what you're looking at right now is uh, an animated persona of my dad. Now, my dad was 85 years old, lieutenant colonel in the Air Force, really interesting guy, uh, born in a small town, um, uh, uh, graduated from high school, went to Appalachian State University, got a teaching degree, then went on to get a master's degree in music, uh, then became a fighter pilot and uh, was decorated uh, for a variety of things that he, that he did in, uh, while uh, flying in, in Vietnam, including saving 8,000 Cambodians. Uh, by organizing a big airlift, airlift campaign. Um, he was interested in photography. Um, and when I say interest, I mean, he had deep interest in it, like he was building his own dark room and uh, he never really did anything halfway. Uh, he was into model railroads, HO scale stuff, and uh, set several national records uh, as a marksman with both pistol and uh, long range rifles out to a thousand yards. So even though he didn't have a big Google footprint, uh, to speak of. He did have a lot of written correspondence, military records, that sort of thing, and I was able to take that, OCR it, read it in, and have the machines make what they could of it, and then I was able to augment that with what I and my, the rest of my family know about him, uh, and now every single day I can see what my dad is interested in, uh, how he's processing the daily events, and it's oddly therapeutic and comforting to be able to do that every day is as all of us have to deal with, uh, um, um, again, letting, letting this person go. And of course, 
it made me think of Ray Kurzweil, who I've met on a couple of occasions. And, you know, I was at the uh, New York opening of his documentary, uh, Transcendent Man, where he talked about his own father and having to, uh, and what a, a deep effect that had on his life of losing his father at a young age and his intent by keeping a lot of information about his dad, all of his, all of his writings, um, correspondence and, and that sort of thing. And his intention is to someday resurrect his dad using artificial intelligence. Um, a lot of people were skeptical of that at the time, I think. And, and now I was too, I'd have, uh, I would have to say. Uh, but having seen how far machine learning has moved the ball down the field over the last two or three years even, um, I'm much, much less skeptical because we're on the brink now of not only being able to watch these personas behave and, uh, and use them in different ways and try to run big experiments with them to predict uh, behavior, whether it's consumer behavior, voter behavior, or even reconnect to family um, uh, that soon we'll be able to actually talk to these people using that natural language processing, ask them questions, have them answer us. Uh, and from there, who knows where it's going to go. But I'll leave you with this. This is, uh, it's definitely a, a brave new world. Things are happening really fast. Machine learning is absolutely changing everything in, in, uh, in the information age. It's affecting all levels of society, all levels of economy, all levels of uh, business practice. And what I've described to you today is a couple of ways where regardless of the size of your company, you can begin to use this today and begin to um, make, make sure, number one, that you're competitive and that if you move fast enough, you might even um, uh, really prevail over, uh, over those who are slower to respond to these forces. Uh, thanks so much, and uh, I look forward to your questions.